This week I show you how to make a card holder and I will give you the template for free. Hey guys, when I first started leatherworking, I came across this template for, it was similar to this, this is my version, but it's a folded, kind of like a bifold card holder. It's literally just two card slots and you can fit a few more cards in there, but just folds in half. Super nice for in your front pocket, and it's a really easy one to make, especially for a beginner, and looks pretty good. I think I made a few of these and gave them away. Um, I've never really sold these, but I'm thinking about bringing it back and putting it on my site, because they're really nice, especially in summer, to throw in your front pocket of your shorts. Stick around to the end of the video, uh, I'll show you how I make the whole thing, and then I will uh, link down to the free template from my website in the description. If you do make one from my template, then uh, give me a shout or, or tag me in it or something just to let me take a look. It's nice to see people using my templates. There's a, a few people that have done it with the uh, cup holder when they made it, and a few people have actually sold that. So I do imagine that you probably could sell this, and you are more than welcome to use my template and sell it. I don't really care how you use it at all. It's really just uh, to help you learn to leatherwork. So let's get into the uh, video. So I've kind of gone ahead here and I've cut the pattern out of paper and just taped it down onto my leather. I also sped this up. I figured you guys didn't need to watch that. If you don't know how to do that, just make sure when you print out the pattern that you print it out at 100% the size. You don't want to print it out scaled and uh, just because it'll be not the right size and then you won't be able to fit stuff in. and basically be ruined and a waste of your time and waste of the leather. So it's an easy solution, just print it out 100% size. And I like to tape it down like this, but there's a bunch of different ways to do it however you like to cut your patterns out. So I got them all cut out there and now I'm just going to bevel the edges just on the tops of the pockets. You want to bevel and burnish the tops of your pockets just because it helps cards slide in and out easier and it just looks nicer. Once you're done beveling you're just going to sand. I go from about 320 grit and I went down to 800 or so. Sanding makes the biggest difference when you're trying to get a nice edge. And now I'm just going to burnish them. You always want to burnish with a little bit of water first. Getting a leather wet just helps give it that nice round edge. And once you're done burnishing with the water, of course, hit it with the tokenol or whatever you're using to finish your edge there. If you're using tokenol, I would just make sure that you try not to get any on the grain side. I find that it leaves marks and it's a little bit of a pain to get off. It's just easier if you don't get it there in the first place. And now I'm just going to glue everything up. I like to use LePage rubber cement. I get it from Home Depot. It's pretty cheap. I think it cost me 10 bucks for that size jar. Of course, there's leather specific brands that make glue, but this stuff works just fine and it's readily available. And I just kind of use the pockets to measure where I need to put the glue on the outside shell piece. So I kind of edited it out there, but just make sure you follow the directions on your glue on mine. It says to leave everything for 10 or 15 minutes after applying the glue before you stick it together. And you will notice that I cut my pockets just a little bit bigger. It's because I just like to hit it with the skiving knife like this afterwards. I find this gets a more even edge than if I try to cut them all out the same size in the first instance. Now I'm just going to just take the corners off with my punch here. If you don't have 
punch for the corners, I used to use a dime and then I would just mark it with my scratch all and then just trim it down with my skiving knife. And I just sanded the corners just so they're nice before I went along with my wing divider here. This was just drawing a line so that I can mark it with my stitching punch. And I don't know how, but I did lose the footage of me marking it with my stitching punch. But what I do is I just kind of go along the line and just mark where I'm going to punch the holes before I do it. Then if I have to make any adjustments, I can. And if you look close, you can see that I am punching along the holes that I already marked. When I stitch stuff up, I like to do two back stitches at the start. So I start three holes back and then I back stitch before I finish it off. I find this to be a little bit more durable and just looks a little more consistent because at the end of the stitch you're going to do the two and a half back stitch. And if you'll notice here as I'm stitching it up, my left hand goes up and my right hand goes down every time. That just helps build stitch. What I didn't mention before stitching up that first one is I like to do about four or five times the distance of what I'm going to be stitching up with my thread. I find this usually gives me a little bit extra at the end, but I would rather have a little extra than not enough. And I assume you know how, but this is how you thread a, a needle for saddle stitching. So again, starting three holes back, back stitch twice. and then starting my stitching all the way to the end. And there we go, it's all stitched up. Now we can just nip those off and finish the edges and we're pretty much done. So you just want to take off enough, but still leave a bit of thread remaining because you're going to be melting it and then pushing it down into the wall. And that's kind of what locks the end of your stitch in. I'm using a thread zap here, but you can easily use a lighter. I have both and I use both depending on what's within reach. And I'm just going to bevel the edges here. Pretty much the same thing they did on the tops of the card slots. The difference is on the outside edge. I really make sure that I sand it down a lot better. I often go quite a bit finer. If I'm doing a single piece of leather like a uh, top of a card slot, I'll usually finish at 800 grit. On the outside, I tend to go more like a thousand or so, and I spend more time doing it. And I think here I started at 320 and then progressively went further. Uh, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000 I think I did. And then again, you just want to burnish with water first just to help round that edge and get a nice shape going. 
And finally, you're gonna hit it with token hole or whatever you like to finish your edges with. Some guys use that trag gum or uh, wax. I prefer token hole, but I also haven't tried too many things. I have tried doing it with wax and it does give you a nice edge, but I find this is better. And also you can see again, I'm really trying not to get it on the grain side. Once that's done, I just like to finish stuff up with a little bit of leather bomb. This is stuff that I've made, but you can just as easily buy uh, Smith's leather bomb or any of those. They're all pretty much the same. You just always want to finish your stuff with a uh, leather bomb. It's a little more professional, gives you a better product. And you're just going to put it on there. Let it soak in as much as it will, and then you just hit it with a horsehair brush and buff it. It looks really nice. And again, I edited it out, but I did actually let it sit for a little while before I used the horsehair brush. And there you go. Folding card holder. I still love these things. I definitely carry one in the summer. Goes nice in the front pocket of your shorts. I hope that made sense. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the only way to make this thing. There's uh, probably a bunch of different ways and you can adapt it to however you make a wallet. But that's just how I do it. If you do make one, tag me in your post if it's on Instagram or wherever it is, or send me a link and a message. I'd just like to see that my stuff's being used. Again, you can use my template however you want. Uh, rather, you didn't reproduce it or anything, but uh, if you're making them, sell them, do whatever. If you do want to get in touch with me, leave a comment down below. I respond to everybody or send me a message on Instagram, however you want. My social media is all linked in the description and you can get a hold of me there. I'm usually, I don't usually take too long to respond. I'm somewhere near my phone most of the time. So feel free to send me a message. Thanks for watching. Check out one of my other videos. Uh, I have a few up there now, as well as uh, if you could like and subscribe, it makes a huge difference for me. It shows YouTube that people are actually enjoying my videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.